there's a lot to be said for that um, uh, in the sense that uh, in, it's my opinion. Um, well, it's not even my opinion. I mean, I believe this is real. The phenomenon is real. And it, it appears to be able to um, impose itself uh, on us, uh, on our uh on our uh, the way we, we we see things, the way we see it. Uh, I know Jacques Vallée uh, talks a lot about that, and um, on the yeah, there has to be some kind of of, of uh, understanding of what this is before we can actually have a relationship with it. And frankly, I uh, you know I think we're at the point now that that we that most most people who are heavily involved in this, at least in the government, understand that this is real. And I think Congress now knows it's real. I mean, this whole nonsense about, you know, China and Russia and it's all this. No, no, no. <laughs> it's man-made. It isn't. It, 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 everybody knows it in the government. It's this nonsense. You know, it is definitely something else. And, um, uh, you know, what that is, we don't really know. But um, I, you know, I don't think that's the case um, because I, I think these things are very real. I think this is very real. And, and, uh, but what it is, is it, is it one or is it 20 different entities? Uh, is it one entity that masks itself in 20 different guises? Um, I mean, I, I hate to sound like a, a college sophomore, you know, discussing <laughs> philosophy, but it's it, it's it's a very real it's it's a very real scenario, right? I mean, you're looking at that and you're saying like, well, okay, uh, the God thing I got over with a long time ago. I said, but the phenomenon thing, it's the same same deal in a way. This thing has the ability to do what it does, and yet it's not offering us anything. It isn't. The military wants to weaponize this. The intelligence community wants to weaponize this. There isn't any. This is why we moved it out. TT, TTS. By the way, we're now to the Stars Inc. We're not to the Stars Academy anymore. But this is one of the reasons why Lou left and everybody else left. It is because you know we wanted to basically make it something that um, that the public owns. That the public has to find out what the answer to this is. Not the military. I, 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 I am. I'm a big fan of of the intelligence community and the military in many respects. I, I you know I wish them Godspeed on trying to figure out what this is, but I don't expect anything from the government on this uh, to come out. Uh, the government exists solely for the defense of the United States. They're not, you know, here to be the, uh, you know, UFO directorate or something like that. That's, <laughs> not, their, that's not their deal. So they're not going to feel compelled to tell the American public anything, tell a friend, tell an enemy, right? They're, 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 they're just basically going to figure out what, what, they're, what, what they need to know, you know, to defend the United States of America, if indeed there is a reason what we need to. We may not, you know, have to. But, so we need to have, um, wow, okay, yeah. Well, you know, remember in 1947, the military, the Air Force came out and the Air Force said, this phenomenon is real, right? Then the agency got involved with the Air Force, and there was absolutely no way, particularly after Pearl Harbor, that CIA and the Air Force were going to let this drop. Just because, quote unquote, they didn't know what it was and that they weren't going to have a program. I think Blue Book, you know, Grudge, all these things, they were just covers. I mean, they were just something for the for the public. But I think... That's where the legacy programs lie. I mean, they've been going on for a long, long time. And, you know, I think they're extraordinarily hard to get to. Uh, but they're there. And um, and they're there because they have to be there, because they really can't let this go. Uh, I know this. And, and, John, you know this, too. I mean, when we people do. Now, getting back to your question, John. So you have this 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 movement and since nobody knows what it is and since in the early days they truly were worried about it uh, for all kinds of reasons you know more mundane reasons you know like telecommunications and stuff was really crappy and all and they didn't want to get everybody all, all wound up and then they started this stupid ass phony crap that they you know had the the media do and that they were doing about you know and they just did an enormous disservice to all these experiencers, it was just disgustingly awful. And, you know, when you think back on it, all these poor people who had these experiences and they made fun of them. Oh, anyway, so that's all going on. And, um, and th this is where you have to sort of credit Lou because, um, even though you had people like you 
involved in this, you know, well, you guys are too young for the 60s, but in the 70s, 80s, 90s, and you had guys like George Knapp and Jacques Vallée, you know, they're, they're pushing all this and, uh, um, and you know, uh, uh, Richard Dolan and even Stephen Greer, you know, going, going after this full force, Robert Hastings, there's dozens and dozens of these people. But, there, but it is in, in the background. It's in the background because nobody came out and nobody said anything uh, uh, in the military. And then when the military did come out, it was, it, it, it was in, when they did have these little things like Greer put on one, Robert Hastings put on, it just didn't connect with anybody. Nobody really paid it any attention because this whole tradition of disbelief, you know, this is uh, this, this whole idea that the, the press and the media and the military put out thing. Yeah, it's all a bunch of horse horse crap, right? That was so strong, no one was able to break it until until Mr. Elizondo uh, decided, um, and 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 then you know, of course, when he became the Under Secretary of Defense for Intelligence, that was a whole other thing. Chris ran all the SAP programs in the government. He ran, well, actually in the military, I should say. He didn't know about this program, about uh, ATIP or OSAP. Didn't know about it. He wasn't happy. So when he went to Congress and he got Congress briefed, and then Lou was able to arrange a lot of this too with the Navy. And, and don't forget that this program, you know, that came out, and when the New York Times thing came out, it was me, Lou, Chris and uh, Hal Putoff had met with Leslie Kane um, at the Ritz Carlton, where we sort of let her know, you know, and uh, she was taken aback um, since we were all senior senior people, and um, so she had to take it seriously. And I was I was dumbfounded when the New York Times came out with that. Of course, I told Leslie. But I, but I remember when, when it came out on that fateful day, um, the story was wrong. And I got a hold of Leslie and I said, it's, it's not about $22 million and the Pentagon has a UFO program. It's about there's an entity out there. There's some kind of non-human intelligence that's living with us on this fucking planet. I'm sorry. I'm getting all wound up. It, that's the story. And she said they wouldn't let me run it like that. Hmm. And, and and it's still very very difficult. So I give the New York Times a, a lot of credit uh, for running this story, but for but for missing the big point. We're not alone, and we never have been alone. And 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 I think that's what what Chris Mellon got across when he got the Navy. And again, the Navy is a very very small part of this. The Navy is just this one little small program that that they they started because they were seeing all this stuff right on the east coast and the west coast and with the carrier groups and that's how this all started but that's that wasn't the real programming that part of it you know um but when the congress saw the classified briefings saw what i saw they they, they were dumbfounded they wanted to know they were angry and they still are angry why weren't we told why didn't we know about this? Now, John can attest to this. This goes back a ways. This, this, this whole idea of, of keeping this hidden, because I, I personally believe there were, and I still believe to this day, from what everything I know, there are no answers in the sense that the government, the IC in particular, and, and, the, and the military have no answers. They really, truly have no answers. They may have uh, material, they may have other things, but that doesn't mean they know what it is that they're holding. That doesn't mean they understand this. This is, this is, it was described to me as, you know, well, very well beyond our ken. Now, a, a couple of people have come out recently and said, well, we're maybe like a hundred, there may be a hundred years ahead of us. Nah, I think, I a think a lot more. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 this is this. I mean, these things. I mean, UAPs are when they talk about the nuts and bolts. UAPs aren't even a story at all. UAPs are just like a a sideshow. I mean, it's just, it's just this stuff that shows up, right? But it it's not it. I mean, it's a manifestation of it. 
But you notice these things, you know, they're out there, they're actual physical, but then all of a sudden they're not physical. This is what Jock talks about, you know, flying objects. He said, hell, I don't even know if they're flying or they're objects because they're objects, they're not objects. You know, they just disappear at will. Um, they're able to do incredible stuff. But are they just showing off? Are they just presenting us a show? What's actually behind that is what really matters. And when what's really behind that are the encounters. What's really behind that, and this is why I really credit Lou and Chris for making sure that the uh, Gillibrand Amendment puts in the biological, the social, uh, sociocultural, and the psychological aspects of this, because that's where this is. That's where Jock Vallee talks a lot about. That's what this is. This is some kind of a control mechanism that seems to be guiding us somewhere or pushing us in some direction here. So it's not about UAPs. UAPs are a sideshow as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but the military is interested in them because, wow, they can do really cool stuff. You know, and the turning point was the New York Times article. And then, and then once that turning point hit, then all the backstories, you know, all the people that were doing this for decades and devoted their lives to it, the people whose shoulders we stand on, right? Um, these are the people that um, uh, came into focus then, you know, and then they started talking more about it. They ha they're helping push this thing forward. So um, just because, John, I, you know, my, my personal feeling is just because this has come out in the public and it's, I don't think this is a, a, a harbinger of, of, you know, the phenomenon coming, becoming more, you know, um, uh, uh, coming closer to us or becoming uh, 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 more, uh, I mean, where, where we're getting to a point where we're going to be understanding. I, I just don't. I just think we just, we just basically are talking about it more. But I don't, I don't, I don't see any, any uh, opening. The only thing I will, ta I will say, um, I've been in touch with the task force and, and what have you, uh, and they really are just truly getting started on this, but they're primarily made up of scientists, you know, and, and my point to them, and I keep telling them, you need religious scholars, you need psychologists, you need people with a very strong background in this that goes back, you know, I know two or three or 400 years or 2000 years, you got to go back to Sumerians, right? You got to go back to all the ancient religious texts. All this stuff has to be taken into account when you're looking at this phenomenon because it, it, it's all there. Then you got to get some really powerful databases. And I know, you know this is what Bigelow is doing with Bass. Um, now, I will say that I am hoping that the photographs that there, that there, that do exist in the government up close do come out, um, you know, you're hoping for that, but think about that for a second. You know, right now, uh, I was talking to somebody the other day about this and, and, you know, they were asking me, well, why isn't this like, you know, cause I had mentioned, I had said, I always say it's a story of the millennia and people say, well, why isn't, you know, and, you know, I, I live in a little neighborhood here, you know, a bunch of old people. Nobody is interested in this. Right. Nobody. Right. Um, you walk into a room with a hundred people, you might get one or two people that have heard about it. But this little bubble we live in, you know, they talk about liberal bubbles, conservative bubbles and all this kind of stuff. This is a UAP bubble. It's not that many people. And, right. um, and it's just... It, it's not, I mean, John Alexander used to talk about this. He said, it's not on the top 10, the top 20, probably the top 50 things that people are worried about in their lives. They're worried about, you know, inflation, taxes, their kids, you know, health issues, things along those lines. UAPs, phenomenon, it's just, it's just not there. The, uh, they get a kick out of it, I think, reading about it. And they're fascinated by it, you know, like, yeah, but it's like not high on their list. Um, and try to analyze it. But uh, once again, when you're dealing with extremely exotic technology, and it doesn't have to be UAPs, um, um, you, you, it tends to be highly classified because you don't want your, you know, uh, you don't want your enemies seeing that or even knowing that you have it. Uh, so that is going to be hidden. And, you know, now here's, here's the problem of all this. 
if it's exotic technology, I mean, if it's a crash saucer, all right, it's not just the technology, you know, it's the fact that we're, we're living here with, with you know, non-human entities, right? And I think that's what makes everybody mad, right? Uh, the, the public mad and saying like, well, well, hell, you know what I mean? We want to know if we're not alone in the universe, right? But then the military saying, well, how the hell do I tell them? Uh, how do I tell them that, okay, that we're not alone in the universe, uh, but I can't prove it to them because I can't show them the technology. If I show them the technology, the Russians will know we have it. Uh, and the Russians will do everything in their power to get it. Uh, and, you know, and there's an imbalance there and all this kind of stuff. So it's, it's a delicate type, type, type rope. Um, um, uh, I think, you know, I, I really think that the idea of hiding this is not a good one. Uh, I think that the people deserve to know that, yeah, that trumps everything as far as I'm concerned. I mean, it, it, we have to know this. And if the government has this, the government really should come out and tell us. And they, they should also be honest with us and say, well, we can't show you anything. And here's the reason why. And just be honest. Just just be honest about it. And and um, if, if that's possible. Now, we know yeah. that the Soviets, you know, the, back when it was the Soviets and before 91, they had their own uh, what they call the Thread 3 program. Um, and if you ever saw the data on that, you know, I was I was familiar with some of the institutes that were working on that. Um, very legitimate, I thought. Just George Knapp pulled these things out in 91. You know, he got it from a, a KGB, uh, from a journalist who got it from a KGB officer. And they look absolutely real. So I, I, I believe they are credible. Um, so, um, yeah, there's, there's, all kind of, there's all kind of issues with that. But CIA doesn't, I mean, it, it, there's, there's no cabal, you know, uh, the, you know out there. It, 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 when you work for the government, and you guys... Well, you know this, DJ. These are good people. Generally, they're good people. They're smart people, and and um, they're trying to figure this out, and they're trying to uh, figure out what to do with this. And somebody's saying, "Oh, they're all going to go to jail because I've known this for seven years, and it's an intelligence <laughs> failure, and all this kind of stuff." Well, yeah, maybe it's an intelligence failure, but I don't know how much of an intelligence failure it is if you actually pick up a down craft and you have no damn idea what it is. You don't know how it works. <laughs> You don't know anything about it. You can't figure out any material on it. You don't. You don't know anything. You can knock on it, right? You can. You don't know. <laughs> you know, and you, you you look. Maybe you find a propulsion system, and you haven't a clue how it works. And not only do you have not a clue, you haven't had a clue for seventy years. <laughs> so how is that an intelligence failure in a sense? That what, what are they supposed to do? I mean, they're supposed to say, yeah, you know, we we yeah, we we what we have is a you know a, essentially a big pile of something over here and it's clearly not from our planet, but we don't know how it works. Hey, Jim, at all. If, if you know, I mean, most people are looking at this from zero, the altitude, you know, the zero. And then maybe I'm looking at it and John's looking at it based on what we may know, you know, some of the corollary data associated with it. We're maybe at the 3000 foot level, right? Maybe 4,000 foot level, but I know there's a 50, 50,000 foot level. And, you know, you get into a lot of trouble when you start saying things like you start second guessing other people about whether they should do something or not do something. I like to give the government the benefit of the doubt um, uh, uh, on this issue because it's so complicated. Um, I do know uh, that there were there were times when groups of people would get together um, to talk about this, uh, whether or not they should let what, whatever information they had out. And the, the conversations always ended up saying no. Uh, they, they, they felt, they really honestly felt no. Um, now, is that is that true now? I, I mean, let me go back to that original statement I told you earlier. People, nobody can... <laughs> This isn't a big topic with most people, right? right. And and uh, you know the, uh, you know I, I was reading these unbelievable statistics about people. Forty six percent of the American populace, you know, reads it to sixth grade level. Um, their idea of uh, extraterrestrials or the phenomena is ET. You know, ouch. You know, <laughs> or what they got on Independence Day, right? Um, and then you're going to tell them, you're going to come out and you're going to tell them, uh, okay, everything you know about God, uh, everything you know about your church, 
and how things work, you know, that you were brought up with through generation after generation after generation is woefully inadequate, has nothing to do with this. As a matter of fact, you're living in a, you were, you're living in a, in a place that there is another entity out there that we can't define that we, we, we have no relationship with that basically can come, can come in and out of your life at will and do whatever the hell it wants. You think about that for a second. The president comes on and he says, I can't defend against it because I don't know what it is. Um, we see it. Is it existential? Well, it hasn't done anything yet. Existential threat. It hasn't done anything yet. Well, I haven't done anything yet. That doesn't mean it's not an existential threat. So that's a pretty, that's a lot of, 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 of uh, that, I mean, that's just a lot to digest uh, for any, any human being. And particularly if it, you know, it's on all the news stations and all of a sudden, will people panic? Some people will. Uh, will you guys panic? No, no, you won't. You're used to this. 